so long that we in control. Me using the room when she on that pole. Heard about yourselves, I ain't see them. Lying off the light of my DM. I don't have time for this, no. This is why you're always alone. Decisions you're making. I don't know what's going on. But that ain't none of my business. Morning, morning, afternoon, afternoon, actually afternoon. What I'm talking about morning. Big up to your damn selves. Big up to everyone in the building. Make sure we're smashing the like. It's the Jerry James Show and we're back after a terrible international break. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't know about you guys, but I hate the international break. It's just like, what's the point of it? Why have we got two games, players pulling out, especially at this period of the season where we are in the running, the running, especially for Liverpool fans, for City fans and for Arsenal fans. We are in the running for the title. Massive, massive game, of course, between uh, Manchester City and Arsenal at the Etihad later on today. But before that, Liverpool have a chance to stake their claim as, do I mean, being top by the end of this game week, right? By beating Brighton, if all goes well in that game. And that's what we need to focus on. So it's Liverpool versus Brighton at Anfield. An audition for De Zerbi. De Zerbi, of course, one of the main contenders for the Liverpool job after Alonso seemingly, do you know I mean, uh, 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 that that role being null and void for him due to the fact that he wants to stay at Leverkusen. And as we said, the Liverpool job is a massive, massive job. Of course, yeah, it's lucrative. It does, it, it's a big job. It doesn't come around there, uh, very often. But we have to always remember that it, it could go very wrong. It could, the same way it could go really, really well when we like the romanticised version of what could happen if Eloza was to come in. It's also got a negative side to it due to the fact uh, that obviously Klopp's been massively successful. But before that period, we were kind of in the wilderness, weren't we, as Liverpool? So, massive, massive game. Massive game, obviously, the Zerbi uh, against Liverpool at Anfield. We've got Klopp. Um, boy, must win. As the title says, nothing but a win. It's a must-win game from here on out. It's the running here on out to the end of the season. Any drop points, you can consider the title gone at this point, especially looking at these three teams or point between, uh, or I mean, between each other. It's a massive, massive game. So big up to your damn selves. Make sure that we're smashing the like, people. Make sure we're heading over to YouTube channel. I know a lot of you guys are watching on X and on Twitch, and I really, really, really appreciate it. But please head over to the YouTube channel. Subscribe if you do like the content. If you don't like the content, that's cool. But hit the like button anyway. Um, subscribe maybe after the video, maybe in a couple of videos, but just hit that notification bell anyway so you know when we're coming with the content. And of course, we didn't have any content to do because of the international break and I'm, I'm not just going to do a draft just because everyone's doing a draft. I think that's a bit silly. But anyway, big up to yourselves. Uh, we've got some people in the building already on YouTube saying, um, we've got Agama Yao in the building saying, big up, big up to your damn self. Uh, we've got John, uh, big up to John saying, long time, JJ. I hope all is well with you. Big up the chat. Big up to your damn self. It feels like a long time at any time it's an international week. It's been like a week, maybe two max. Or maybe, has it been longer? Has it been longer? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, big up to Alejandra saying, hey, with the, with, the, with the extra Ys and the extra Xs, you know, like that. Uh, we've got courtside saying, the artiste, J. Oh, I thought it was talking about me. He's talking about John. He's talking about John. So big up to courtside. Uh, we've got Zayn Hanif saying, JJ, three points first. I take a smelly... Listen, three points first? 
only three points, nothing but a win. I don't care about that. Now, performances don't matter. You've got to treat it like tournament football. It's boom, 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 boom. Can you just get the results and win? That's it. That's all. That's all we're at, man. That's all we're at. But look, of course, when we get into these games, and as, as people know, if you're a fan of the channel and you know, I do something called Jerry Knows Bets, right? So if you're into betting, and I'm not, but if you're just wanting to just like have a bet with your friends in terms of like, oh yeah, I bet you that this, but not over money, just the kind of the, 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 the saying, right? I'm going to give you some stats that you could probably go into that might aid you if you're doing it. And if you're a betting person, of course, bet responsibly. But make sure you just head over, do you know what I mean, and listen to these stats because they might aid you in whatever kind of goals you've got. Do you know what I mean, a cheeky, cheeky, uh, do you know what I mean, little bet down on the game. Um, let's go into it. Having won on each of their first six Premier League games against Brighton, Liverpool have now just won, uh, have, have won just one of their last seven against them, which is absolutely crazy. In the last seven games against Brighton, We've drawn four times and lost twice. So anyone that's looking at this game as an easy run-of-the-mill game, looking at Deserby, some people not rating Deserby, they, they can see five, six, uh, every other game. Yeah, that might happen because of the way they go and play football and the players they've got, 100%. And obviously they're being stretched because they're in the Europa League. Whoever Brighton have had, though, they cause us a lot of problems because they're very, very good football inside. And if Trent, I remember Trent alluding to the fact that Brighton are a massive, massive team. It's one of the teams he struggles most against. So, you know, that, that's something to take note of. Um, Brighton are unbeaten in their last three away league games against Liverpool, winning one and drawing two, having only avoided the defeat in two of their previous 11 visits to Anfield, which was losing nine and drawing one. And we need that. If you're a Liverpool fan, we need that omen to come true, people. We need that omen to come true. Um... Liverpool are unbeaten in the last 26 Premier League home games, winning 10 to 20 and drawing six since a 2-1 loss to Leeds in October 20, in October 2022. And we all remember that one, guys. Um, the Reds have scored, have both scored and conceded in their last six at Anfield, at last having a longer such run between August and December 2019, which was eight. Uh, Brighton beat Nottingham Forest 1-0 in their last Premier League match, but haven't managed to string together consecutive victories in the competition since a run of three in September. So, of course, they've been quite stop and start. They've got a win, a draw, a loss, or a win, two draws, then a win, then a win, or not, not a win because then a loss, and then two, and then a win, then a draw, then two draws. They've been very, very kind of up and down this season in terms of results. But the football's been fantastic. When you guys actually look at how they go and play, they dominate possession. Um, I think they're only second to Man City in, in that regard. Uh, they played way more, uh, a lot of short passes. Really, really easy on the eye to watch. I think everyone would obviously um, uh, accept that. Um, since the start of last season, 11 of Brighton's 12 Premier League away wins um, have been against sides in the bottom half of the table, with the exception being 3-0 win at second place Arsenal last May. Indeed, under Roberto De Zerbi, they've taken just five points from 33 available away from home against sides in the top 10. That's something to definitely, definitely look out, out for. Um, let's just run let's just run these down as soon as possible. 37% of shots Liverpool have faced in the Premier League this season have been from outside of the box, 114 uh, um, out of 310. Um, with only three clubs facing higher share from distance this term. Despite this, the Reds have conceded fewer outside the box goals than any other side. And obviously that's due to Alisson. We've actually conceded one goal from outside of the box, which is mad. Um, let's go on to Salah, man. And we all want to know about stats about Salah. He's always seemingly breaking a record. Uh, Liverpool's Mohamed Salah is averaging a goal or assist every 76 minutes in the Premier League this season. The best rate of anyone to play at least 180 minutes in the competition this term. The Egyptian needs one more assist to become the first player in Premier League history to reach double uh, figures for both goals and assists in three consecutive campaigns. That's what Salah's dealing with, guys. Record breaker, there's nothing really more else to say. Um, Alex Alexis McAllister, who played 112 times for Brighton between 2020 and 2023, has scored in each of his last three appearances for Liverpool in all competitions, three goals in total. He'd scored just twice in his first 31 appearances for the Reds this term. So again, we know he's coming into form. He's starting to assert himself as that Don in midfield. And I put my hands up. I got it wrong, people. I got it, got it wrong when it came to him. And the last one I've got for you guys, uh, coming into this round of games, no player has provided more assists in the Premier League this season than Brighton's Pascal Gross. The German also ranks second for chances created, 76, and is one of the players, along with Andreas Pereira, to create 30-plus chances from both open play, 46, and set plays 30 this term.
Pascal Gross a baller. When I was, you know, when I was saying Pascal Gross is probably better than McAllister, and I was saying that, I wasn't saying that for no reason. Pascal Gross is a baller. Of course, he's he, he's getting on. Still very, very effective player. And you can see how he's still having to be that main man. You know what I mean, their signings haven't really, really worked out. Haven't, you know what I mean, the likes of Ansu Fati, always injured. That who has been injured. So they've been quite up and down. But look, looking at this game, guys, of course, it is 102. The uh, team sheet is revealed. And that's why I've done it at this time. So we can get into this team sheet together, uh, people. Let's just go and get that up for you guys so you see our starting lineup. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's share this screen for you guys. Smash the likes, people. I hope you're smashing the likes. I haven't even had a check, but if 51 of us in the building, we should easily be on 60 likes then, because 10 of those likes will be my likes. Psych. I'm joking. 50 likes. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's get to 50. But yeah, without further ado, as you guys can see here, oh, Liverpool's actually, are they following me? Ah, uh, look, Liverpool, follow me. Raw, Liverpool must must be listening to what I've got to say then. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, Going on here saying, this is obviously our starting lineup for the game, guys. So we have Kelleher in goal, Gomez at right back, we assume. Actually, Gomez at left back. We've got Van Dijk, um, Kwanzaa at centre-back. So Kwanzaa is starting alongside Bradley at right back. We then have a midfield of Sobosai, McAllister and do, 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 Endo. So our starting midfield, if we're being honest, currently, we know obviously Jones is still obviously out um, out injured. It hasn't made the squad, unfortunately. Um, up front, however, we've got Salah, Darwin Nunes and Luis Diaz. Hopefully Diaz um, obviously can maintain the form he's been on and obviously we need Salah and Nunes to be as good as possible. A very, very strong team, of course, on the bench. Apologies, people. Uh, we've got Adrian, Konate, Gakpo, Elliot, Simikas. Gravenberg is back after his injury that he sustained in the Carabao Cup final. Uh, Clark, McConnell and Dans. A very, 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 very strong lineup, you know. A very, very strong lineup. I think when you've got Elliot, Konate, Gakpo, Gravenberg all to come off the bench, you've got to say it's a strong, strong team. I don't know. What, what are people thinking? Is that, a, is that a strong team? Are you Are you guys feeling it? Let me know, man. Let me know. Let me know. Uh, big up to DC in the building saying, big up to JJ. Liverpool must win. we got a title to win. Facts. Um, DC saying that team wins. 100%. It's a definitely a team to win. I don't think anyone can have any qualms about that team starting. Uh, we do, tr obviously, two, we've got two young players playing. We could have easily gone, you know, Simicas at left back and played Gomez at right back. And um, I think, but I think, obviously, Bradley on merit deserves to start. I think Kwanzaa on merit deserves to start, especially considering Konate's coming back from that injury, that little knock that he had. We've got our starting midfield, right? Obviously, Trent's still not in the team. Jones is not in the team. Robertson sustained that injury, but hopefully it's not too bad. Still strong, strong, strong lineup, man. Strong lineup. Big up to really Scouser in the building. Big up to yourself. We've got LFC Aaron in the building as well. Big up to yourself as well. But yeah, man, I'm really, really, I'm not going to lie. I'm liking this team, man. I'm liking, liking this team. I'm liking this team. So, of course, what we know in the, in this situation is that Brad, um, Brad is obviously going to hold the width for us and we're going to have Gomez inverting into the midfield that allows Sobosly or McAllister to really push on. And that enables, I think, McAllister to play that, that much further up to then affect the game. And if you look at the stats recently, three goals in his last three games, he's been very, very pivotal for what we wanted to go and do. And, you know, his goal probably, was it, was it the was his goal the equaliser? Yeah, it was the equaliser. The equaliser, obviously, against United in the FA Cup last time out. And, if we're being honest, this game, it's probably, the, the international break probably came at the right time because it gave us a time to kind of reassess, refresh, regroup, have a think about, you know, how, what happened in that game, what we did wrong as a team, what kind of decisions Klopp made that maybe weren't right in terms of subs. You get to regroup, really think about, have some training sessions where you can put together a plan of what you want to go and do and then get into this game. So, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy that the international break come. I'm happy that we've got a game to 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 do you know what I mean to 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 kind of play on the back of that loss, but we've had a break in between that because sometimes I think teams in general, when you're when you've lost the game and you're having to go and win a game again, you're having to get yourself back up when you some players, you know, they struggle to kind of recover the day day two days after a game. Do you know what I mean? So for me, that's I think something we need to definitely, definitely, definitely think about. Um 
big up to honesty in the building saying, yes, I'm very happy with the team and Robbo should be back for the Europa League, League match, by the way. Uh, Brighton got seven injuries. Yes, Brighton do have seven injuries. I'm actually going to get the Brighton team now as well. Uh, LFC Aaron saying Trent is on Sky today with the presenters at Anfield. Oh, really? I'm going to... I can't wait for that. I need to, and you know, let me... Why don't I actually... Yeah, why don't I actually get that up so I can actually see what's going on? I'm, I'm actually an idiot sometimes. Uh, cool. Cool. So he's with the presenters. That's mad. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, Angel saying, could really do with Jones, Trent and Jota back. I mean, we could do, but I do look at, look at this squad and it's more than good enough for me. More than good enough. Like, you, we go and look at this team. This team is, we've got Quanta, we've got Bradley, we've got Konata, we've got Graham, but we've got, we've got so much promise in this team. This team should easily beat this Brighton team that have seven injuries, as honestly you just said. Um... Big up to Honesty as well for being a member for six months of the channel. I appreciate you wholeheartedly, my brother. Big up to yourself. Um, and yeah, look, without further ado, let's go and have a look at Brighton's team. I think it's interesting to go and see what Brighton is saying. Um, it'll be because I, I'm I'm very interested to see how how Deserby sets up, you know. I think considering they've got some injuries. Hold on, let's just share this. Cool. Let's share that. That's Brighton's. Uh, so Brighton's lineup. They've gone with uh, Verbruggen in the in goal. But what happened to Steele? Is Steel injured? I thought Steele's their man. Anyway, nonetheless, Verbruggen in goal. Lampty Dunk. Lampty. Lamp, hold on. Let's go. Let's see how they got. Okay. Over. They're playing five at the back. It looks like. So Lampty Dunk Veltman Van Hecke. And um, Estupinian, that's five. It will be Baleba and Moda in midfield. And well, oh, yeah, Baleba, Moda, and Gross in midfield. Sorry, so it's three in midfield. And then it will be Adingra and Welbeck up front, potentially. What do people think that lineup will be? They've got Lalana on the bench. Milner's out with an injury, I assume. And he's not going to make an appearance against Liverpool. You've got Buonanotte. Uh, you've got Barco. Um, recently made his debut for Argentina, the Argentinian. You've got, obviously, Ferguson. Highly rated Ferguson. Fatty. Igor, the centre-back. Uh, Igor Julio. Webster, Lalana, And still so. They've got a lot of injuries. No Mitoma. No Joao Pedro. Um, no Dahoud. Like, they've got a lot of injuries, man. They've got a lot, a lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. FC Aaron say um, they have them in a 4 2 3 1. Okay. In a 4 2 3 1, that'll be interesting. Hold on. What is Trent? Hold on. Is Trent, yeah? LFC Aaron, is Trent going to be there for the whole game? Or is he just there, just talking about the game? Let me know, man. Let me know. Uh, Adingra, a lot of LFC fans. Adingra's good. Honestly, Adingra's really, really good. Oh, it's not even a goatee like that. He's had that, man. He's had that. You got me excited, man. I thought he was doing some next next, next level trim. Um, Lalan on the bench. Milner injured as well. Yeah, exactly. Milner's injured. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking at his team. Strong, strong team, man. Strong, strong team. Where do we think? Where do we think the game's going to be won and lost? So if we... Let's just actually get them set up. I think that's the best thing we can do. If we go into lineup builder, let's get Liverpool set up. Let's Let's just... We'll have Liverpool set up and we'll have uh, the Brighton team as well. All right, cool. Uh, FC, hold on. Brighton, hold on. Cool. Let's just share this tab so you guys can see this. Guys, smash the like for me, please. Please, please do. Don't be a bozo, man. Just don't be a bozo. All right. So let's go. This is obviously Liverpool's team. So we know Keller, we know it's going to be a 4-3-3. So we might as well get that team in already. It's going to be Bradley. Uh, Connor Bradley will be Kwanzaa. Uh, Virgil. Uh, Gomez. We got to Gomez as well for the call-up as well. Endo. Endo, um, Sobo, 
McAllister, um, Salah, Nunes, Diaz. Cool. So that's the team we're going with, of course. I mean, we could potentially change Sobosai and McAllister around. Let me know if you're watching this on the replay or if, if you're in the chat anyway. Let me know. Hit the likes as well, guys. Stop being bozos. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a look in a minute. If I see like, I'm probably throw up on screen. If I see like five likes or 10 likes. Um, Sobosai and McAllister obviously might rotate in that situation. So you might have McAllister playing on the right um, as, he did, as he did against United. You might have Sobosai playing on the right. It just depends on kind of the system set up and wherever you want that energy. Um, we may actually play some on the left, considering we've got Bradley's going. Mm, I'm not sure. Interesting, interesting. Anyway, interesting setup there. And of course, if we go here and look at uh, Brighton, yeah, BHA. Let's just put BHA so we need that. Uh, Liverpool versus Brighton. Hold on. So if they're saying you guys say it again in a four-two-three-one, yeah. So if they're going in a four-two-three-one, they're going. Verbruggen in goal, yeah. Which I don't know why Steele's not playing. You've got Lamptey, Dunk, um, interesting. Who are we got? Who are we gonna? Who would they go with then? Let me actually share this one. That's I get that. How about this one then? Share this. All right. So in terms of their team, right? So Lamptey, Dunk. I think they're going five at the back. You know, guys. How do you think Brighton are going to line up? How do you think Brighton are going to line up? Because uh, let me let me just go back to where I am at. Yeah. So. You guys said 4-2-3-1. We've got Verbruggen, we've got Lamptey, we've got Dunk, but we've also got Van Hecke and we've got uh, we've got Van Hecke and who else? Veltman and Estupinian. What, is Estupinian going to play as a winger? I don't know. I'm going five at the back. I think they go five at the back, or even three at the back. Maybe three, four, one, two or something like that. Have they got that? Yeah, it'll probably be something like this. It'll probably be something like this. So that will be um we need to move Lamptey now, innit? I need to move Lamptey. It'll be Van Hecker here. Veltman. Lamptey. Estupinian. Gross. Moda. Welbeck. And you have these just in behind, like Edingra. Who else is available? Who else am I missing? Who else am I missing? Oh, Baleba. Ah, uh, okay. So maybe we have Beleba here. And Gross here. And obviously defensively, it might be like this. But then what happens is these guys will move and it will become like a five, isn't it? Something like that. I think in possession at times. Three, four, well, five, three, one, two, or a Dingra, or you might go just like that and have well back up front and a Dingra drifting out to these areas. They might have gross. Maybe it's like that. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to go and see because a stupid you might get up. It might be a four defensive. I think they're going to be quite flexible. 
Maybe sign like if they play four two three, I'm gonna be a stupid young player as a left back. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. A stupid young left wing back. That's what I thought. That's what I thought, man. I thought a stupid young would be a left wing back. I don't know. Interesting, interesting, man. Uh, big up to Ed in the building. Big up to yourself. Um, saying uh, a Dingra gets a free roll, in my opinion. That's what I think. I think Gross or a Dingra will be ones. Obviously, I put them here, but I I think it will be something like this. Be, they'll be as wing backs. If you want to put them in a more advanced role. Will be Belay, but a Moda as the two deep players. You will have Gross just ahead of them. It will be Welbeck. I think it will be something more like this, right? But a Dingra can pop round any any side really. Just he's floating either side, depending on what side is better. So Dingra just playing off the front man. Um, so yeah, that's the team I think Brighton go with, um, and I think that's the way they set up. So let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys think, people. Um, honestly here saying they will try to hit us on the count with the stooping young Lamptey overlapping with the Dingra being their danger man. Welbeck will be the hold-up player, uh, gross to control the pace of midfield. Yeah, and Belabor as well. But remember, Belabor is a very, very good midfielder. Very good midfielder, man. And Moda, I'm not going to be biased, but Moda is good, man. Moda is good. He's good, he's good. He's technical, he's technical. But we'll see what he can do today. Uh, Neil Gunner, big up to Neil Gunner saying wing-backs will invert or go as wingers if need be. Exactly, I think that's... I, I'm good. It's, guys, and this is what I urge every Liverpool fan to do. We don't watch Amarim all the time. We don't watch all these the, like Leverkusen all the time, even though they're more they're easy, more easily accessible, right? Take a look at what Brighton do. Just have a watch. Forget the result. We probably will. Hopefully, we can beat them and convincingly. Let's have a look at how they move the ball, where they operate, where their players pick up positions. And it might give us an indication if we were to go and get that manager, what that manager can potentially instill into our teams. And bear in mind, he's playing up against a much, much like bigger, uh, it's a massive task, isn't it, to compete against Liverpool at Anfield. So for him to even try to implement what he wants to do, he's got to be brave. So I think that's definitely something I definitely want to have a look at. Uh, Aaron's here saying, like the video, people, it's free. Exactly, it's free. How many likes are we on? How many likes are we on? How many likes are we on? I'm going to be fuming. There's 80 people in the build. Bruv, we're on 28 likes. Smash the damn likes. There's 80. Guys, anyone on X, anyone on Twitter, head over to the YouTube ASAP. Head over to the YouTube ASAP. ASAP. Smash the damn like on the video. Trent, this is like the last dance and VVD is Jordan. Is that what he said? Ah, uh, is that what he said? Yeah. All right. Say no more. Uh, Dana saying this game is that it's a massive game, man. Sobberside this season, not better than Jones or Elliot. Um, I hear that. I, I hear that. To be fair, I think uh, like I remember I saw some people like in, in the international break ranking Jones as like a seven out of ten this season. He's been absolutely outstanding. Uh, honestly, saying where's Ansu Fati? He's on the bench. He's on the bench. He's on the bench. He's been injured. So he's on the bench. He's just coming back from in from, from injury. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do coming off the bench. Uh, Joao Pedro is obviously a massive, massive miss for them as well. He's a massive, massive miss. Um, LFC Aaron saying he's been there from the start. So I don't know. I think he's gone now. You know, I think he's gone. I don't think he'll be there for the whole game because you're wearing tracksuit. Otherwise, he'd just be dressed up in whatever he wants, man. Um... Big up to honesty in the building saying, JV question, do you see a world that Klopp before he leaves, he will play over with two number 10, Sobosai and Harvey? Um, no, depending, it just depends. If we're chasing a game, he might put on two more advanced number eights, but they won't ever be number 10s. They won't ever be number 10s in, in the way that you're looking at what Alonso's doing or what kind of Rodgers used to do with Coutinho in a number 10 or in, that number 10 role has really, really changed. Players don't really play over a number 10 like that anymore. So, um, yeah, no, it'll be interesting to go and see, man, what they do. Um, our, I'm already picturing how the Zerbi's formation would look like with Paul players next season. Exactly. Uh, same, man. Same. I'm really interested to go and see. And, and that's the right way to go about it. I know a lot of people are anti Zerbi for some reason. Again, I always get onto people like this because they're the same people that were grilling, 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 grilling. Anyone saying De Zerbi's not a tap manager 18 months ago, but because this season they've not pushed on from where they were. People are complaining when they've lost their best players. They were in Europe as well. Got dumped out by... I mean, come on. If Roma versus Brighton, do you expect Roma to beat Brighton? Of course you do. Of course you do, in my opinion. Of course you do, man. Um, we've got a question here saying, I have a question. Why does Klopp hold Diaz and Sobos slide back? Uh, well, look how free they're playing for the countries. He doesn't hold them back. It's the system that, that presides over everything. That's the difference. It's the system that presides over everything. Honestly, we spoke about this before. We spoke about this before. 
honestly saying what's the difference between the Zerbi and Thomas Frank? Um, Thomas Frank, if you're looking at him, he's someone that goes and plays a bit more like Klopp. They don't use the ball as much. They they try to be very, very direct um, at every given opportunity, That whether that's going long, going short. Um, they both deal with squads that haven't got a lot of money. Um, Thomas Frank's been at Brentford longer, so in terms of stability, he's been there. Um, however, Thomas Frank isn't held to the same to a guard that the Zerbi is. Um, when managers have like conferences and they speak about tactics and stuff, I actually spoke about on my Twitter. People go and look to what deserve has got to say. He's like a revolutionary in that category where he discusses football and his ideas and values on football when people listen. So Klopp was doing this before he won anything with Borussia Dortmund because of the Gagan press, right? Bielsa's done this before and obviously Bielsa's quite old, but Bielsa's style was very kind of like, just, oh my God, like we've never seen anything like it's going for man for man on the 11 side pitch really kind of adopting small-sided games, but applying that to a big football match is very, very difficult. De Zerbi is one of those players. When you go and hear about what people speak, say about De Zerbi, Lallana, what McAllister said about De Zerbi, what Prince Boateng said about De Zerbi, what um, all those Sassuolo players said about De Zerbi, what the Shakhtar players said about It's ridiculous, his thought process and his, it, how methodical he is. Now, of course, they're both, play, they're both managers for me that haven't gone and achieved... Um, winning great things and uh, as such. But when you look at the market, really, there's no one really available like that. I mean, you could look at, of course, an Amrim and in terms of winning stuff, 100% Amrim's winning stuff in the Portuguese League. But he's only been in the Portuguese League. He's only been in the Portuguese League, if that makes sense. So when you're going and looking at stuff like that, and it's like, cool, but you've only been in the Portuguese League. Can you go and replicate that in the Premier League? That's going to be another task. I'm not saying he can't, but he hasn't done. How well have they done in, in, in Europe? They haven't done that well in Europe, sporting. Porto have always done better than them in the, in the Champions League. They have done. They've always got into the Europa League and, and such. So there's so many, obviously, caveats. Again, I'm not too fussed with who's manager. If you ask for my opinion, I like the Zerbi because of the way they play football, but that's just the way I view football. Amram's still a top, top, top manager. And if we get him, we'll be, we'll be happy to get him, man. We'll be happy to get him. And whether that's Thomas Frank, we'll be happy to get Thomas Frank as well. Uh, for some reason, I feel De Zerbi will end up at a Bayern or a City. Yeah, and if they end up at a City, and you'll see why City go and get him. And if City are looking to go and get him, if Bayern are looking to go and get him, then clearly he's that level of manager, if that makes sense. Dude, that's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, big up to Ed. Um, Prin um, Prince Boateng's interview with Rio was eye-opening about De Zerbi. Sounds like the perfect bend of Jules Sargent and arm over the soldier man management. Uh, GTV saying, no, nah, we have to let our De Zerbi agenda run, bro. No, I'm letting it run. I'm saying, I want De Zerbi. I, want, I do want De Zerbi. I think the full, I, think the, I, I do want him, man. Uh, big up to ERLC saying, finally, I can chat. What's up, my guy? Are you a Liverpool or Brighton supporter? I'm a Liverpool supporter, bro. I'm a Liverpool supporter. I hope you're doing well, enjoyer. Um, as long as it isn't too cool. Yeah, exactly. do what it is. I just like a certain style of football, innit? So, like, naturally on the eye. So, if someone asked me what, like, forget the managers, just pick a style of football. I'd always pick the style that I just like. That's from just watching football. Now, of course, results, how good the manager is, all comes into it, right? Like, it, it does. But I just like the style of football, if that makes sense. I just like it. Um, it's like, back in the day... Um, I used to like Roberto Martinez is Everton. I think they played good football. Do you get it? Like that, that, that type of thing. I wouldn't want Roberto Martinez, but I like the football. So here's what is we'll have to see. Um, De Zerbi or Amrin will be guided by Edwards and Hughes. Exactly. And I think what's really promising for any arguments for De Zerbi is the fact that Richard Hughes is a massive admirer of De Zerbi. Now, as a director of football, you have to have a direct relationship and a good relationship at that with the manager. You cannot be in a situation where you're coming into games and you're like, or into, into the seas, into seasons, into transfer windows where you've got two polar opposite ideas of how football should be run and how it should operate. If it don't work out, just go and look, have a look at um, how it worked out for Les Ferdinand. A very, very kind of open director of football that talks about his time at QPR on the overlap. I listened to that the other day. If they're not on the same page, it will never work. So if you've got someone that's an admirer of the manager and sees football the same way, you're probably going to have better success regardless of what we think. So if Richard Hughes is a massive admirer of Amarim, get Amarim in. Get him in. Because it means we're going to have, like, there's going to be some unison in the background stuff. Uh, our Hollywood saying it's got to be Amarim or Deserby. If it's Southgate, I'm hanging up my Liverpool... No, it won't be Southgate. Southgate? <laughs> Hell no. Uh, from what I'm hearing, 
my uh, Michael uh, uh, Michel at Girona is being molded into Pets replacement, but yeah, I can definitely see the Zerbi at Bayern. I can definitely hear that. Uh, I'm really not a fan of the Zerbi, but if he comes in and wins a trophy and challenges for the Prem and win a Prem or two, I'll support him. Well, you have to support him from beforehand. And why are you not a fan of the Zerbi? Based off what? Because like, I, honestly, if I'm if I'm sure, last season you were definitely a fan of the Zerbi. Last season you were definitely a fan of the Zerbi. Don't lie to me, bro. Last season we were definitely a fan of the Zerbi. So for me, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not judging, a, like the same way we like to go and give, like, do you know what I mean? Loads of managers like cut them some slack. They're like, oh, but he lost his best players, and it was this, and there was injuries. We never apply that with what the Zerbi for what reason. But last season you were eating from the palm of his hand. Last season when they were popping us about, when the tone, everyone was praising the Zerbi. Let me not even go into Twitter and, and go into the drafts. Yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying, Neil Gunner. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like the his personality, like they know what like, know him. I don't know the damn bread up. I can only go based off what people are saying. So if Milner's saying he's a top manager, do you trust Milner's opinion? I do, as a person, because of what he's done for Liverpool and how he was at Liverpool. Look, I trust Lalanas. I trust Prince Boyatings. Why would he lie about the Zerbi? Yeah, exactly. But you can't talk about, you can't go and look at individual cases. You have, you have to look at them as at individual cases. You can't just go and put a blanket over them and be like, yeah, because you got peppered by looting, it's done. Because you were you weren't saying um, like unlike me, yeah, and you weren't saying clock out last season. You weren't saying that. I was saying that, right? So if I was saying this again, it makes sense. But I was saying that based off the fact that all right, cool. Well, I don't think he's going to get better. You were loads of people were giving the reason why people um, people were giving reasons as to why why we weren't able to go and achieve with clock. Well, that's the same thing with Deserby though. Lost McAllister, that's their best player, right? Lost McAllister. Um, who else? McAllister was a massive player. Lost Caicedo in midfield. They're bro, imagine, imagine Liverpool now to injury lost McAllister and lost um who else? Oh no, tell a liar, tell a liar. Let's say Arsenal lost Declan Rice and Erdegaard got snapped up and they didn't have Declan Rice and er Erdegaard. They'd be finished. That's this is exactly. That's it. This is exactly it, Jerome. Big up to Jerome. Losing Mac 10, Caicedo on Colwell. The spine of your team. Virgil van Dijk. Imagine that, yeah? Virgil van Dijk, um, Soboslai, um, or Virgil van Dijk, whoever, or let's use Arsenal as an example, or City, yeah? Trossard. Oh, my God. Trossard as well. It, in January. So, hold on. That's like saying, yeah? All right, City are going to lose. Um, Rodri's going to go. De Bruyne is going to go. Uh, Ruben D or Stones is going to go because Ruben Diaz is the captain. Dunk's the captain. So we keep that. Stones is going to go. And then um, and then Grealish is snapped up as well. Or Doku or whatever, whoever, or Foden. They look four key players from last season and couldn't rep and haven't replaced them properly because Antu fatty has been injured. Dahoud hasn't been good enough. They've had to pro promote Gilmore. They're relying on Milner to play and Lalana. Come on, man. Come on, man. This is crazy, man. Crazy. Um, uh, the list of players that Brighton lost is ridiculous. Like a whole 11, bruv. Uh, we've got G2 saying flip-flops in the fan base. Uh, big up to Rob Stewart saying, Deserby is a fraud. Uh, the football is nice, but are Brighton progressing? Yeah, they are progressing. People get con with all the passing, etc. but he loses too many games, but they are progressing. Brighton had never been in Europe before he got them into Europe. Brandon never got the amount of points that they got last season. He got them into Europe. They lost all their players and they're a team that cannot go and purchase players. That, that's, that's just it. That's just the facts. I don't care if people want to go and say they think Amram's better, but don't try to say he's a dead manager because that's foolish because what people are then going to say, it's actually getting me a bit annoyed. He'll go to, but, uh, he'll go to Bayern. He'll go to... Um, watch him go to City, yeah, in an, in a, in a, in an alternate reality. He goes to City... He slaps everyone up at City, plays ridiculous football, and people are going to be like, we should have got the Zerbi. We messed up. FSG messed up. You had you had the same thought process as them. Regardless, Carl Trossard, Caicedo, McAllister, Elwell, where's everyone expecting this season? 
Uh, and in my humble opinion, let's just, saying, let's go. In my humble opinion, just maybe uh, he took what Potter did and kept going. And this season, the juice is just running out. We're losing four players. Though. How does that make sense? Lost Estupinian, Matuma to injures. I right, uh, and March as well. Oh my god. Yeah, you know what? I'm not even. Yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, Brighton are still on course to finish sixth. Lol. When they where they finished last season again, the flip flops are too much. I didn't. You know what? I'm. Not, let's not even. Get, you know what? I'm gonna. Who wants? I'm actually gonna do. A, you know. Tom Little done that little short on 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 Amarim. I'm gonna do one on on, on, on Deserby, man. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna have to do one on Deserby. This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. But look, people, um, what do you expect from Brighton if they finish top eight and carry on their pro exactly <laughs> making money and, and and making a profit as a uh, anyway anyway. Let's get into it though. Um, before before we before we head off and before I head off, let's get into score predictions, people. So what are the score predictions for this game? Liverpool versus Brighton at Anfield. Kickoff in what? Oh, wow. 28 minutes. What are we saying? LC Aaron saying Trent is still there. I can see him, man. Uh, GT is saying, yeah, don't worry. We're going to do a stream next week. Exactly. Yeah, 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 we have to do one, man. We have to do one. Like a prop. I'm, the Deserby prop is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the Deserby, Deserby man. From now on, every... Every 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 stream there's going to be a section dedicated to Amram. I mean for to Deserby. Uh but yeah, score prediction. We've got Phil Bidwell, big up to yourself saying three, one, three, two for GTV. We've got three one, two one Liverpool, two nil Liverpool. Um, I'm going two one Liverpool. I think Liverpool will get it done because of obviously Anfield, but I think Deserby's gonna put up a put up a put up a fight. Uh three two Liverpool if there's an upset three three. Well, put it if there's an upset three three. It will be done. My Deserby agenda is going to run. Reg fact, regardless, I want pretty football. I've been dealing with dead things for the longest. I want a painting. I want a baddie. Get me a baddie. Oh, that's exactly what it is. But look, 2-1 Liverpool. 2-1 uh, Liverpool. 3-1 uh, Liverpool for Ed. Yeah, I'm going to go 2-1 Liverpool, man. And to score, I'm going to go... I think Luis Diaz gets the first goal. I think Luis Diaz gets the first goal for Liverpool. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going 2-1 Liverpool, Luis Diaz to get the first goal. You're going 3-1, 3-2. We've got a lot of 3-1s and 3-2s, you know. It's very up and down. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, you want tic-tac-toe life? Yeah, I'm, exactly, man. I want, I want... You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. I haven't done a stream in a long time. I haven't done a stream in a long time. But look, people, uh, that's been the preview for the show. I need to now get ready and get into just the mode of watching the game. I'm going to be back uh, as soon as, yeah, straight after the game. Do you know what I mean? With, with a stream. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to that stream. Make sure you guys are there. Smash the like if you're watching this on the replay. Um, we got 4-0 LFC for honesty saying, I want LFC to be on K. settings. Just smoke Bri Brighton. Darwin 2, Salah 1, Mac 10 1. LFC needs to show no mercy. I mean, that's what they need to do. Can they do it? That's the question. But look, people, thank you so much for tuning into the preview uh, for the Jerry James show. Hit that notification bell so you know when we're live and coming straight after the game with that instant reaction. Because look, look, it, it, I'm going to try to get that out to you today. I'm going to have to try to get that to you today. I'm not working tomorrow because it's bank holiday. I'm going to have to try to get that to you today. So, look, stay with us. Hit that notification bell so you know when we're live. Hit the like button as well on the way out if you haven't done already. Um, stay tuned. Head over to GTV Football as well for all your shorts as well at the moment in time because the shorts are popping. So, if you want quick little snippets, get into that. But look, people, uh, until next time, um, it's been the Jerry James Show and we are out. Peace. Peace.